Um, how are you guys? Are you good? Good, good, good. Nice to see some friendly faces and nice to see some new faces to get to know. I hope the friendly faces don't grimace at any point in the presentation. I can only really see you, Tom, so I'm pointing at you. Um, but hi, everyone else. It's great to be here. It's an absolute pleasure. Oh, if I do that, I can see more people. Um, hello. Um, it's a pleasure to be here again at Wadafornia. Uh, and to be presenting this talk to you. My timer hasn't started, or it's at 19, I presume, because 20 is a silent count, perhaps. So um, I'm just kind of talking in a bit of a monologue because I'm hoping that will help befriend you to me a bit more, you know, act a bit goofy and then see what happens. Not so many chuckles. Shall we get into it then? Um, my name is Kareem. I am the Innovation Manager at Abbey Road Red. What does that mean? Um, we have an incubator um, at Abbey Road Studios called Red, which was founded four years ago to sit on top of the amazing history of innovation, uh, the legacy of innovation at the studios, um, which, which has been kind of an incredible, incredible story over the 88 plus years um, that it's been going on for, starting with the fact that we were the first ever purpose-built recording studios complex. Um, and uh, you fast forward through the years and Alan Dow Blumline did the experiments for the patenting of stereo on the premises. So we like to call ourselves the birthplace of stereo as well. Um, and through the years, the blueprint of the modern uh, recording console was created in-house, the Red Desks, from which Red gets its name. Um, so yeah, there is this amazing history of innovation at the studios. And what we want to do with the incubator is kind of look outwards and help very talented families founders um, add, add value and new innovations to the industry uh, that we love and are passionate about. So what am I here to talk to you about right here, right now, music's deep impact in 2019? What does that mean? Um, forward. Forward? Oh, computer says no. That's fun. Ah, oh, there we go. Is that two or one? Um, <coughs> the... Uh, Timer still hasn't started, so I might just look at my watch quickly. There we go. I'm timing 20 minutes. Um, I love this little noise that's happening with the slide transitions. <laughs> it's not transitioning. <laughs> How do we know what's happening? Okay. As well as using our instincts, which we do do a lot of, we look at data. So in order to understand the deep impact that the mus that music tech is having uh, on our business, um, we have been thinking about trying to develop a data-led look at what's been going on. It's been a really strong last few years in terms of music tech innovation with some amazing products and technologies launching. So what we've done at Abbey Road uh, was decided to look at data to give our understanding of music tech startup launches some context. Now, I just put up a definition of context on the screen. I'm going to use the uh, laser for the first time. Look, a laser. Um, Kat would love that. We just got her a laser. She loves chasing it. Um, so context is defined, this is an open definition from Wikipedia, the circumstances that form the setting for an event, statement or idea, and in terms of which can be fully understood. So we've decided to use data to paint a picture, and over the last uh, sort of six-ish months, and stretching back to before then, um, we started to put together this big database looking at all of the startups that have come into our site. So this isn't like a completely guaranteed exhaustive look at the startup ecosystem um, without holes in it, but it's what we see at Abbey Road Red. And at Abbey Road Red, we make it our role to go out there, scout, and see what's out there as much as possible and understand what's happening in terms of music tech trends and startup launches. From that, we hope that we pick amazing founders and amazing startups to incubate. So we've looked at 200 or, or plus uh, startups. Uh, we've classified them. Um, We've been reaching back in our site over the last three years to kind of put this picture of all the startups we've seen in that time together. And in terms of the launch dates of the actual startups, um, they, they go back as far as 2010. So we've looked back three years. However, the startups themselves go back longer than that. Uh, if you want to throw any questions at me, do. Uh, if, if anything is unclear, please let me know. Um, so what have we done? We've classified each startup into key categories. So what does that mean? Um, we've looked at primary value chain and where they sit in the categories. So in terms of, is it a distribution platform? Is it a marketing platform? Is it 
a music service platform, then we go tick, so we add a tag to it. Um, we've looked at the medium to wi by which we access it, so is it an app, is it a Web Plus app, is it a, a software as a so service, API, etc. We looked at where it sits in the secondary value chain, so when you break down the categories, um, you know, is it sync, is it a music streaming service, for example, and then we've had a long look at uh, tech and product themes. So what tech and product themes is the startup bringing? So what features does it bring to us? And we apply a tag for each feature. So for example, AI, which we'll look at, gets a tick if the startup is using AI. So that's how we've classified um, what's going on. Moving forward. I do love the sound that's coming out every time I move forward in the slide. We have the first um, set of data that I want to present to you. So this is very fresh. We're just going to give you percentages, but in, in, in terms of the health of the ecosystem, there have been a lot of startup launches and good growth in the amount of startups launching over the last few years. T going back three-ish years, looking at 2016, there was 37% growth on the year before. Into 2017, we reached a kind of peak, 49% growth on the year before. And then there was a little drop um, of 31% in 2018, but still a very, very healthy amount of launches, so kind of plus 37-ish percent on, on 2015, um, uh, sorry, or the preceding years. Now, there is that peak, it's come down a little bit. What we're seeing in 2019, it's a little bit of a slow year so far, so I'd like to know what my colleagues out here think of in terms of what you're seeing and the amount of launches. But what we think is happening is that there may be a bit fewer launches so far in the, in the year. However, we are seeing that they are very high quality ideas, high quality startups. So we believe that, it's, that 29 is going to be a strong year and there's still time in the year for that, um, that chart to grow. And there's one other thing um, about music tech startups versus kind of industry agnostic tech. In the music business, we use a lot of tech from other industries or which isn't specifically made for the music industry, right? So for example, marketing tools, a crass way of looking at it is Facebook is a marketing platform that's not music industry focused, but we wouldn't class that bit of tech in our survey. So there are a lot of startups that are being used and technology that's being used that isn't strictly qualified, which might be another reason um, for that being a, a smaller uh, graph uh, chart. So what about meaning? What kind of meaning are we getting from the data? So the first thing we've done is split it up into primary value chain uh, sectors, as I explained. And what are we seeing? So we're seeing that there is this kind of trinity of key processes in the industry that's represented by where the startups are focusing. So across all the years that we've looked at, we're seeing a heavy featuring of music creation and creative process, a heavy, heavy featuring of marketing and engagement, and a heavy featuring of audio com consumption. So we're looking at that as a key trinity, right? You make music, you uh, market it and, and help it find the right ears, and then um, you listen to it. So it's great to see that startups are focusing their efforts on these three key areas, and that's the first trend that we're pulling out of the data that we're looking at so far. Together they add up to about, oh sorry, I've gone forward there, let's go back. Um, together they add up to about 60%, uh, and there's a healthy chunk there that's kind of streaming. So streaming is uh, having a really strong showing as well. Any quick questions? No. Um, so next, to take our next look um, at the data we're pulling out, what about the tech themes? So what's interesting is um, AI has a really big showing. So we're all very keen on AI and the impact or influence that AI is having on the industry. But what we're seeing in broad terms is that AI is working its way across the value chain. So startups are using um, AI increasingly across the whole value chain. That could be, for example, in uh, collaboration and production terms, generative composition, adaptive music, um, or it could be in data processing, helping to market startups, um, or uh, in other processes. And we'll dig more into that later on. So, um, AI has a really heavy showing. Um, the other three things that we'd like to pull out, sorry, streaming wasn't in the last one. It's, uh, sorry, it was in the last one, but it's replicated in here as well. So streaming content has a big, big showing. But the three key sort of chunks that we're pulling out are AI, crowdsourcing, funding, and rewarding. What that means, a lot of startups and platforms are using fans either to uh, crowdsource demand for gigs and, 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 and or records um, and pay for it in advance. One of our alumni uh, crates is a good example of that, crowdfunding vinyl. Um, but also getting fans to engage and market 
uh, the music themselves and uh, spread it to other fans, for example, is another way of involving people in terms of using the crowd. So, and providing people with rewards, sorry, is the last one, so rewards for your efforts. So that's a big chunk, 8% here. And the other big chunk we've pulled out is personalization. So personalization and hyper-personalization is another really big trend across all of the content industries. Um, but in our startup pool, we're seeing that um, it's a really heavy showing in terms of the, the trend or tech mechanic that the startups are using. So um, personalize this content for you, um, recommend special content for you, or customize this content or product. So those are the key kind of tech themes um, that we're seeing in the data. Moving forward, so we've talked about AI. So AI really is working its way into the music industry. Let's look at the way it's kind of matured in terms of years. Oh, I've just pressed forward, but it's going to stay with us. Uh, sorry, this is in the... Oh, yeah, it did go forward. Let's go back. Uh, in terms of what's been happening over the years, so in terms of the amount of launches, this is what it looks like. So um, there's a 200% in uh, increase here on the previous year. Then in 2015, 100% increase in the amount of launches involving AI that we're seeing. 33% um, increase in 2016, and then 63% in 2017. And a, just a bit of a decrease in 2018. But that shows you the broad trend, which is that AI is finding its way into our industry. And how is the next question, right? What role is it playing? So we've had a look at the impact points that we're seeing in the data. The key one, in terms of all of our aggregated tags, is the creative process. And this is broadly representing the creative process, right? So that could be music production, it could be a collaboration tool, a writing tool, um, or other creative processes. So that's where the majority of the AI kind of impact is happening in our data pool. Uh, examples of startups that we're working with at Red to show you how that might, might figure is um, Voclayer, which has uh, an intelligent microphone called Doubler that uses machine, le machine learning processes. Um, Humtap, which is a generative composition platform. Uh, AI Music, which is a kind of music shape-shifting platform, so that falls under, under production. Those are some key examples. What about the other impact points? So marketing and engagement, audio consumption, scouting. So this is great because AI and machine learning processes are being used to get music to the right people and to find amazing new music. That's what we're seeing broadly in the data. OK, so moving forward to the next slide. What about outliers? So we're seeing kind of strong data points, which I've shown you so far. In terms of outliers, like what's not having strong showing in the data and what does that tell us? Well, I'd like to kind of show you three of the ones that we're, we're focusing on at the moment. Sync on the left up there, functional music, and blockchain. So to start with functional music, only about, from memory, I think 2% of the startups are showing a trend towards um, functional music in our tech trend tag tags. But at the same time, it is a key kind of emerging trend in the industry at the moment. So what does that mean? It means the effect of music on cognition. So the effect of music on our brain states, on our physiology, on our moods, on our performance. So that could be a music app that, that's adaptive and helps us sleep and kind of reads feedback loops to enhance that sleep-inducing music. Um, it could be music that helps us heal. Um, and uh, all, all sort of, you know, music that helps us train better, train harder, run faster, whatever. Um, so this is functional music, and we're seeing a really interesting bubble around it at the moment. Lots of startups are addressing it with adaptive music experiences, and we're at an early stage of trying to understand the science of music and how it affects cognition. Uh, we just put on a red talk at Abbey Road um, about this very subject, and it was really interesting. But one of the things we saw was that there's not enough data at the moment or big enough data pools to really, really support the underlying science that's coming out. So functional music is a, is, a, is, a, is a smaller area of the data pool, which we think is a really interesting um, sector that will grow. Uh, we also feel that sync is ready for kind of a big lift from technology. What we've seen in the last few years is there haven't been that many startups using interesting technology to kind of really, really enhance the sync process. But this year, just through meeting people and being out there, we're seeing a lot of startups kind of look at that space. So sync, we feel, is it's only represented by about 4% of tech tags, but we feel that it's, it's something that's going to grow this year. 
Blockchain is an interesting one because there's been a lot of kind of hype around the launch of blockchain, especially cryptocurrencies. But focusing on blockchain, we found that, or we haven't really seen that it's found its rightful place uh, in music in terms of contributing, um, not just for the sake of it, to kind of adding value to the industry. So um, we're seeing a very small amount of, of blockchain uh, tech tags in the startups that we've looked at. Um, and we feel that's an interesting one to look at long term, but we're not really sure how it's going to pan out. So those are the outliers. Um, and I think that that's all the data I have to show you. I think the final slide is just to kind of support that what we're seeing at Abbey Road Red is an amazing amount of technology launches and startup founders trying to add value to the business, trying to add amazing bits of tech and tools, um, and that it's an expiring time to be in music and technology. Um, that's all I really had to say, and after all of that faffing around the timer, I've still got five minutes left. So I don't know if I've run over by five minutes by not starting it on time, or still got five minutes. So I suppose there might be a time for a question, Sharon, perhaps, or if you don't mind, like, okay, so we've got five minutes. You can either shoot me off stage or, or, or we can have a chat. Um, so feel free to ask a question if you want to. There's one over there. Shall I point the laser at you? That's a bit rude. <laughs> Yeah, I can repeat what you're saying, actually, if you want, or... or Boom, we need to chat because that's part of our next phase. Yeah, it's a great question and it's a very important one because, right, yeah, we're looking at volume here, you're right, but we're not looking at what succeeded or, or what's failed and more importantly, why. So, yeah, we're going to delve into that in the next year or so, hopefully. But it's harder because how do you judge success? Is it staying power? Is it revenues? Is it funding? You know, funding might be one way of looking at it, but still not really judging long term success. But great question, yeah. That's more homework as well, so thanks. Hi. Yeah. So you mentioned that you identified over 200 startups. How do you manage all those conversations? Because I assume that they're on different levels. They go through different cycles. Yeah, I mean, in terms of managing conversations with them, we don't have like a dialogue open with all of them, but the process is that we're, we're scouting. So it's amazing to be invited here. You know, I want to meet people. I want to meet founders. And then we, you know, if we do, we, we'll add that to our, our pool. Um, we do a lot of reading, scouring online resources. We, we have a really wide network of people we trust and talk to a lot to kind of say, hey, what's going on? You know, have you seen any cool startups? So that's how we build a pool of so many. And then we have a kind of thorough process of looking what they're offering to decide who to reach out to and consider for incubation. So we kind of whittle the pool down quite a lot quite quickly because we know what we're looking for. Um, and that's when we actually start a dialogue with people. So, yeah. Last question Thank here. You. Last question. Hey, Claudia. Hey. How are you? <laughs> Thank you, Karim. I'm well. What are you going to ask me that you can't ask me like <laughs> in a casual conversation? <laughs> I'm just going to expose you right here. Um, <laughs> so my question is, um, in, another, in other tech areas, we see a lot of uh, growing trend of social uh, consumerism and conscious consumerism. Do you feel that that's making its way into the music industry or entertainment industry? So people willing to address more niche products or you know, niche uh, market shares? or you know, consumers who are willing to pay more for services, anything like that? Yeah, that's, it's a great point. And, and actually, we should chat more too, because it's something, it's something we're looking at. And remember the personalization um, slide. So a lot of it falls under that. So paying more for a niche product, or tailoring the product for you, or, or you know, a higher level of product. Uh, we're seeing a lot of startups catering to that. Um, and one of the outliers, which I didn't choose to include, but I feel like I should have now, is, is that niche is the new mainstream. So we're seeing a small amount of data kind of representing it probably, I think it was between 2 and 4% again, but it's there. And the important thing is that it's growing and, and startups are catering to it. So it's a very important part of, of what we're looking at. Yeah. Cool. Um, that's it. It's yeah. been a pleasure. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you. Cheers, dude. My pleasure. Thank you.